Okay. I've created this video a few times because when I start going on a rant about the political group LGBTQ+, which is a political group, I've been told over and over and over by people who are legitimate LGBT group people. I hate saying that because it's an, it's an immutable characteristic and trait that you're trying to progress politically. Not progress, you're trying to change politically because progress means that there's something greater to go towards and it seems as though there's a regression within society as of right now because of the political movement, the political groups, LGBTQ, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, SJWs, <laughs> like SJWs as a whole. And they're, prim they're primarily rich, well-off, or wealthy people. And it's like, oh, I don't I'm, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, do you know where your poop goes after you flush it down the toilet? No, you have indoor plumbing. You're fucking wealthy compared to the entire planet. So you complaining about anything, it's like, first off, check yourself. It's like, oh my gosh, my life is so difficult. <laughs> it's, okay. But this is one of the reasons why I had to redo this video over and over and over and over because the LGBTQ is a political group. Let's let's read this entire first title with replacing LGBTQ, a political group, with any other political group. Avatar, Netflix's live action series, needs Black Lives Matter representation because nothing says nothing says Avatar like black people. Nothing says Avatar like white people. That doesn't have anything to do with Avatar. Avatar has something to do with the four nations, specifically in a very fictitious world. And they're primarily, well, let's just say all of them aren't white or black. They're Asian. <laughs> now, why do we call them white people and black people, but not yellow people? I guess it just sounds weird. <laughs> but, you know, something, whatever. Avatar Netflix's live action series needs Antifa representation. Avatar Netflix's live action series needs black representation. Avatar Netflix's live action series needs white representation. Because that's actually one question that I would have is, would you allow me to, act, not even would you allow me, would you support me in complaining that Avatar is actually very anti-white? Because the majority, oh, well, the main character is, but the main character isn't white. They're, n they're all Asian. <laughs> they're all different. <laughs> it's, gosh, okay. Uh, which is why, I can't, again, it's just I feel kind of embarrassed to even say that because there's a lot of context into this this article. We're going to go into every single bit of this article. Let's get right into it. Avatar The Last Airbender was an intelligent, quick-witted series that was ahead of its time, set in a world inspired by Asian cultures where some people, known as benders, can manipulate the elements using variants of martial arts. The animated series used as, um, used as its backdrop a global war that touched upon topics not commonly presented in children's programming, like <laughs> colonialism and genocide. And this is something that we're going to start at, colonialism. Colonialism is the policy of a country seeking to extend or retain its authority over other people or territories, generally with the aim of economic dominance in the, in the process of colonization. Da, 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 da. But that's very true. Colonization did happen. Did America have coloniz colonism? Colonialism? I keep mispronouncing it. Colonialism in its past? Yes. Was it bad? Well, at that time? Yes. So one of the greatest things is we should stop. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> stop ch Stop as a country trying to change another country. I, I agree with that one. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, and genocide? Yes. However, it wasn't until the release of its sequel, The Legend of Korra, that sexual identity was uh, was finally explored in the Avatar franchise. And anybody who has not seen The Legend of Korra, I can sum it up in one great video of... Uh, let me see if I can find the video. There he is. Uh, E.R. Uh, the Legend of Korasami is turf, and here's garbage. So, turf wars. Uh, it's... I highly recommend you go and watch this video. I've watched it three times. I'm probably going to watch it a fourth time. It's hilarious. It shows the ridiculousness of Korra Sami. More importantly, uh, the, the Legend of Korra being not good, <laughs> but it still has a many, many amazing things I love about the show. It's just, it is woke, and that was one of the directions of the creators of the show. So, and more importantly, Korra, the main character, spoiler warning, winds up being gay. And here's the issue. They show that the last episode of the fourth and final season in the last scene. 
You don't know that until the very end. You don't know who she's going to end up with, which is kind of the issue because she she kisses everybody. She is a whore. She's a slut. She really is. She's so self-aggrandizing. She's selfish. And she and she's always having people pat her on the back. It's like, oh, you've had such a very difficult life. Objectively, she has. In the show, it's horrible. I love those moments of like, how is she going to get past this? You know, I'm rooting for you. But she always gets a pass on some of the m more horrible activities because... Please go watch it. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, like its parent show, The Legend of Korra, addressed multiple socio uh, sociopolitical issues, and that's one big issue here. LGBTQ is a political group. If anyone says otherwise, say, well, what if we stopped progressing LGBTQ stuff within society? Stop. Just pfft, stop it. Oh! <gasps> Any pushback on that would show how silly anybody who claims LGBTQ plus is not political. Because the entire point of LGBTQ is to progress things, certain things, certain specific things, regardless of whether or not, and I have to stop using the word progress, because what they are doing is regressing people within society. They really are. What is a woman? Because of the LGBTQ plus group, Woman means anything you feel like if you want to feel like a woman. So there is no physical, there is, there's no specific mark of, de, of, there's no specific demarcation of what trans, translates a woman. Because if we say biologically woman, well, no, that's biologically female. What is a woman? Well, what are, well, better question is what is not a woman? You have to identify that with me. Because if you say masculine, are there not masculine women? A gay woman who acts masculine? Well, it's like, wait a second. You get that's the, the LGBTQ plus group, postmodernism, leftism, SJWism, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, they're all the same. They, they're, they're all viruses. They're mental ideological viruses, not because of who is in the group, but the ideology that is perpetrated within them. Because what they do is they tear everybody down, they make them weak, say it's everybody else's fault, let's change other people, and saying, wait, why are things the way that they are? Wait a second, is there an objective standard that actually contradicts what I'm doing? As for an example, if a conservative came out and started saying something that I would disagree with, and I say, you're wrong. <gasps> what do you mean I'm wrong? Do you hate conservatives? It's like, what does that mean? Conservatism in of itself is ideological. LGBTQ plus is inherently intrinsic, a, a value that, a, not a value, a characteristic that you have that is immutable. And you can't argue against that. So if somebody says, hey guys, I'm gay. Okay, what does that have anything to do with you being good at your job? Well, I feel, nope, nope, stop right there. Feeling and what is are two separate things. Unless you'd like to combine them, because if they are, that gets into a whole, whole slew of arguments, but it's because there is an intrinsic characteristic that is tied to an ideology. That is the big issue here. This, is, this to me, is white supremacy. I am white with an identity character with identity characteristics. Therefore, therefore, I believe certain things. What does that have anything to do with it? It doesn't have anything to do with it. That's what I hate, I hate about the LGBTQ plus political group and movement. Let's get back into this. Something, um, characters, something Avatar wasn't ready to do when it aired. Well, wait a second. Again, wasn't ready to do when it aired. Again, by, this entire article is by CBR.com. It, it, it's not a woke site, but they don't know how woke some of their articles are. I mean, some of them, there was a, there was an article just a moment ago. Um, I was debating between the two and they said that the Water Tribe, uh, with Avatar, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, was at fault for the entire nation for why the war went on for as long as it did because of how powerful and militaristically ready they are as a society and you know i just disagreed with everything that was in it not that they were just outright horrible or wrong with whatever their opinion was cb cbr kind of made some good points i disagreed with them but there weren't bad points they were just something that i don't think is correct <laughs> it's like if i try to i'm trying to make that i'm trying to I'm trying to be as specific as possible, and ho hopefully that came through. 
The series introduced several characters who identify as bisexual and homosexual, including the protagonist herself, Cora, and Kaya. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that last one correctly. The only daughter of Katara and Avatar Aang. Okay. Avatar Kiyoshi, uh, the third Avatar, I believe. Uh, the, th the third to last Avatar. Uh, the series didn't do it. Uh, the series didn't do it all by itself, though. It was also aided by the literacy works that followed. The last image of the final of the finale of the Legend of Korra mirrored the comp composition of Aang and Katara from the original series. When characters Korra and Asami gaze into each other's eyes in an act meant to establish them as a loving couple, well, in essence, they they they're not really loving. They just love each other. It's the, the it's it. It's, it's, okay. Yeah. It's just, they hold hands and they walk out into the sunset. I mean, it's like, it's not, you don't see that until the very end. They push, they shoved that thing in there so hard. They raped it. They really did. It's like, why, if they, if they kept it out, it would be better. But by putting it in, it's just like, you know, it's crap. I don't know. It's probably the best way of putting it. That seemingly named that seemingly named Korra as the oh that seemingly named Korra as the first LGBTQ plus avatar, and that's the biggest issue. Guess what, guys? Oh, and and and, and non gender. Uh, we now have a politically named avatar. That's the biggest issue that I have in the entire series because what of right now is happening is that the LGBTQ plus political group is saying that, hey guys, we have a, is there a political group for white people? Is there a political group for straight people? By that very notion, every single person understands. I'm not saying that straight people have had it easier. I'd say that gay people specifically have had it harder over the years, but in of itself, a straight person can't have a political party because of their intrinsic, immutable trait of their sexuality. No, it's wrong for you to have a it's wrong for you to have a political group. Us gays, we've been harmed. No, have you been harmed? Have you been harmed? No, no, no. Not people in the past. Like there are white people that have been murdered and enslaved, raped, abused, pillaged, plundered. Um, gutted, and then allowed to be burned alive. Guess what? I have no identity with that person because of the being straight or of having the same hairstyle with me. It's A, that sucks. I can identify with someone who I've had relationships with other people. I can relate to a woman much more if there's something relatable in my world. And if the one thing that you relate to is, are they gay? Are they bi? Are they trans? Are they queer? Are they a lesbian? Are they straight? Or if these things are the forefront of your mind, you're a shit human. You have, you have shit ideology. I, I corrected myself. I corrected myself. You have a shit ideology. That ideology is poisonous because if your value, if your values come from that, you're in the wrong. You could be a great human being with great belief, you, a great personality, fun to be around, be a very caring individual, but these activities are wrong. A political group with, uh, with certain ideologies trying to progress certain things based on the based on an immutable characteristic and characteristic about themselves gosh okay but when f but then fans found out differently in the graphic novel that followed in the legend of korra turf wars which again i highly recommend in going to er's channel and watching the legend of korra sami is turf and here's garbage i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it right after this this video i really am it's freaking funny Especially if you know what's going on, but he he goes into great detail and everything that you need to know is in the video <sighs> Turf Wars it was revealed that Avatar Kyoshi was bisexual and even had a long-term girlfriend and that is what made the entire Turf Wars comic books that preceded the Legend of Korra series shit Because they pushed hey, she's bisexual like, what does that have anything to do with it? Guys, we need to make it more represent representative or something. It's like, okay. The highlight of that is what's in issue. It's, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I have an issue with this, not because she had, was bisexual or had a long-term girlfriend, but again, 
LGBTQ plus is a political association based off an immutable characteristic and an associated ideology with that you're trying to you're trying to push onto society. That's what I disagree with. So everything that comes about this, if we were to use this exact same standard the opposite way, uh, let's just say that Avatar, not Aang, oh, Avatar, I'm freaking blanking on the guy's name. Um, who's the water guy? Give me one second to go, uh, go find him. Okay, I was, I think this is the name Kuruk uh, from the Northern Water Tribe, and he was just a go with the flow type of avatar, and he didn't have many issues except for when the face stealer, whoever the face stealer name is, uh, stole his girlfriend or wife's face, and that's something that kind of set him up, uh, set him on just on a despair uh, route in his life. He didn't have much of difficulty in his life. It's just with ugh, let's go back to this. Uh, with Avatar, Kurik, I'm going to go with Kurik, oh, we'll get to this in a bit. Um, Avatar Kurik uh, was straight and even had a long-term girlfriend. Or a long-term, yeah, long-term girlfriend. And it's like, I, that doesn't matter. Like, that whole point doesn't matter. But because of the LGBTQ+, I'll say it over and over. Because of its because of an ideology based off your immutable skin, immutable characteristic that you can't change, or if you think that you can change and it's a choice, guess what? That kind of goes in the way of just being born gay. Yeah, so, oh, man. the revelation comes when Kaya approaches Korra and Asami about their new relationship, revealing her homosexual identity has as she describes the attitudes towards LGBTQ plus relationships in each of the four nations. Again woke crap woke bullshit it really is and this is in the turf wars comic books according to her the earth Ki the earth kingdom is the most traditional in their views because their whole basis is earth an unchanging unrelenting nation it really is <laughs> so of course yeah even avatar kiyoshi who, who by all accounts loved men and women which again woke bullshit it's like, how is that woke bullshit? That's a, that's a thing that actually happens. Bisexual people, yes. But LGBTQ plus is a political association. It's a political thing that's trying to progress an ideology based off your immutable characteristic. I can keep saying that over and over, and you wouldn't allow the same to be in reverse. You wouldn't. Anybody out there who says that if I'm a bigot for saying that I think the LGBTQ plus group is absolutely poison to the entire society, well, would you allow a straight, a straight association and an ideology based off that straightness? No, 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 because the two clash. <gasps> Why is that? <laughs> or does it? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's funny. All you have to do is think. I'm, I'm grateful to have been kicked out of, kicked out of, because of my failing grades in college. Because if I was continued to be in college, I would have probably accepted that, hey guys, just be kind and nice to each other. It's like, well, why? Why should I? Critical thinking is not permitted in class because you're supposed to be taught things. So it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What if what I'm being taught is not worth the amount of money that I'm actually paying for? <gasps> After all, oh, and here's the real big word, the real, the big word here. Even, uh, according to the Earth Kingdom's most traditional reviews, even Avatar Kyoshi, who by all accounts, loved men and women, was unable to affect any kind of real progress. And that is the key word here. Key word, key word here, here we go, <laughs> of real progress. Because you're gay, there's progress you need to be changing into society. There's change within society. You need to, you need to, you need to go out there and just change society. How? How? <laughs> is it because of your being gay? Well, what does that have anything to do with her being a, an effective avatar? If anything, in the show, she was just an absolute dickwad. She, uh, she, did, she, there was a, there was a tyrant, a tyrant who was going out and conquering uh, civil, uh, civilizations, towns, cities, neighbors, and he, he's going and pillaging and plundering and just, hey, this is my kingdom. <laughs> and guess what happened? She split asunder her, her her city, her little town, her hometown, and pushed it away from the, from the, uh, from everyone else. She didn't do anything. Kyoshi was a shitbag. <laughs> so, yeah. After all, the Earth Kingdom has been the slowest to accept change and the most militaristically repressed. Well, let's just say that's like China. Yeah. 
uh, a place that has very un- uh, other than Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. <laughs> oh man, much much blessings towards y'all. Good luck. Ah oh, man, yes, but most militaristically repressed. Yes, that's what's happening in the Earth Kingdom. But guess what? The military. What what does militaristically repress have anything to do with? Again, okay. The sexual representation in Avatar universe is very sporadic. Yes, because Aang didn't French kiss Katara Ka- uh, every episode. It took about two seasons for him to kiss her. And then it was like, oh my gosh, yay! The, yeah. Appearing primarily in the lesser known comic sequels, the only real nods to sexual identity and gender fluidity, which again, they are nonsensical words because gender fluidity, it doesn't matter what you actually act or think or feel, it's whatever you want to identify as. That that's kind of gender fluidity. It's like I'm well I, I feel myself to be a woman today. Okay, are you a woman? <gasps> oh, you're a bigot. <laughs> Appearing in a television series as brief, such as Aang being described as feminine. Yes, because Acting feminine doesn't make you a woman, fucking retards. <laughs> Toph as masculine, because Toph is a little girl. Sokka learning how to fight like the female Kyoshi warriors. <gasps> Notice how it was female rather than women. Female Kyoshi warriors. That's kind of interesting, though. Um, yeah, fight like the Kyoshi... Uh, fight like... Well, why does it have anything to do with female Kyoshi warriors? Male Kyoshi warriors. There's... The Kyoshi warriors are only female <laughs> so it's like you wouldn't say the male warriors it's like if there's a specific warrior class that's like they're only war okay it's like uh soka learned how to become a, fe- a kiyoshi warrior donning the the female dress of kiyoshi avatar kiyoshi because it was part of the culture of practicing those moves practicing that culture that's what you did it doesn't make Sokka a woman by doing such he did what was traditionally women, traditionally female. He was practicing that because he would only be able to learn from the Kiyoshi warriors if he did those particular activities. And Korra getting just a minute to hold her girlfriend's hand. Yes, literally a minute. Actually, it's about 15 seconds, if anything, in the entire series. Four seasons at the very end, last episode. It's so retarded. It was all minor moments that seemed to be given a second life as fans of the series have gotten older. It's clear from the way Avatar treated these characters that the idea was always there. Kyoshi was portrayed as being both masculine and fem- feminine, which has nothing to do with sexuality. It has nothing to do with sexuality. Kyoshi was portrayed as being both masculine and feminine? Actually, no! In the show, she was always a butch bitch. <laughs> she was always a fucking cunt. Actually, she wasn't a bitch. She was a butch cunt. That's what she was. She never portrayed herself to be feminine. She looked feminine, sort of. She was like seven feet tall. That's not very feminine. Oh, but there's going to be very tall feminine women. But she didn't really look feminine. She was this, oh, jacked up. And just she, she portrayed herself to be masculine, not just feminine. And if you're saying that makeup is what makes you feminine, good, as long as we establish that. Men don't paint themselves. <laughs> Landing somewhere down the middle, which also could be said for Toph, who was a tomboy, but mentioned her to ca- her occasional desire to take part in girly activities. And eh, man, this the, not just this writer, but again LGBTQ plus looking at it through that lens, y'all are fucking retards. Not gay people, LGBTQ political group. Toph was a tomboy. You know why? Cause she always did things herself. She grew up. She grew up much quicker than everybody else. She already she already had all uh, she had all the fucking wealth that she could ever have. She had all the connections she ever had. She was repressed because of her her father and specifically father and mother thinking that she was so weak and helpless. But in reality, she was strong. She fought back against that trope. That's the reason she was a tomboy. It had nothing to do with her sexuality or her gender, but mentioned her occasional desire to take part in girly activities. Cause she's a woman! Cause she was a girl! Really? (laughs) Fucking retards. Uh, Such characters have never had affirmed love interests as if the show wanted to keep the audiences open to the possibility of unorthodox romance just by keeping them single. Let me rephrase that again. Let let me, let me, let me show, showcase that again. In the last sentence that you had, you said that Toph 
occasionally desire to take part in girly activities. Uh, she's 12! She's 12. She's 12. What kind of, what kind of love interest would a 12-year-old have? Really? She was already an individualistic human being. She didn't like being part of a group. She was always her own thing. Oh, that's because she was, what, potentially gay? No, she was individual. Her relationships must not have lasted in an avatar Co in Korra, um, the Legend of Korra, because, spoiler warning for anybody out there, is that in the Legend of Korra, um, we get to see Toph. Again, she's fucking ancient. It's awesome in a way. It's it's nostalgic, and unfortunately, it seems like they they use they don't use nostalgia often, but when they do something nostalgic, they don't really poop on the character. They the, the characters are somewhat intact, and I'm appreciative of that. It's just some of some of the choices that they made in the show I disagree with. But Toph was twelve and individualistic. She had a she had a child. I think two children. I think it was just one child. No, no, she had two children. Yeah, one was a... Uh, they, they're both metal benders, and one became a police officer, and the other one became a, uh, the leader of a this, the, the metal nation or metal city. And, again, uh, which is contrary to Toph, who is, leave me alone. I don't care. I'm going to do my own thing. It's like, I don't care about authority. And the, and the daughter, and both daughters became... That's that thing. again. It was it was beautiful. I love that. But being an individualistic tomboy, being somebody who doesn't want to be around people, someone who's not with her husband or whoever had he she had sex with. I don't know if it was like they were half half brother or half half sisters. I don't know if it was like two different people that Toph had sex with and then moved on. But again, she she doesn't be with people. That has nothing to do with her sexuality. She had children with a man. Men. Multiple men, probably. <laughs> probably at the same time. <laughs> Who knows? Toph was crazy. Toph wasn't crazy, but she got to do whatever she wanted. And if somebody told her, no, you couldn't, well, she'd find a way to make it happen. In a world where people are literally in touch with spiritual forces, able to summon the elements to their will through their bodies and souls, why wouldn't they embrace all forms of love? Sex is not a form of love. It's a form of attraction. Because if you love somebody, you would help them act in a better way, wouldn't you? Because, again, you can love somebody. You really can. But what does that have anything... Like, <laughs> it's sexual nature. You can love somebody. Like, I, I love my family. I wouldn't have sex with them. It's like, that's a, that's a form of love. You know, and I'm sort of getting uh, bent over backwards over this. Because... I'm sort of just going over on the roll, and this is one of those moments where I feel embarrassed to even say it. But yeah, no, I was wrong here. I'm just going down. I was just going down a rabbit hole. This is where I went. The one biggest issue here is that if you want to embrace all forms of love, Jesus, I think, said something about repent. The epitome of someone who loves is a loving being, loving creature, loving embo the embodiment of God. God is love and everything. Repent. If you really love somebody, you don't. Let the, if you really love a child, you don't let them stay in a dirty diaper. You change their diaper. So, again, it's what all forms of love. Again, what is love? What is love? No, baby, don't hurt me. Baby, you don't hurt me no more. I don't know. I'm just kind of nitpicking at that last one. Now Netflix is adapting Avatar The Last End Airbender for a live-action reboot. It is a, it is the perfect time to include the el to include the political group. Again, political group. They're not going to say that they're a political group, and if they do accept that they are a political group, well, you have to accept them because gay, which is the reason why I think they're absolute viruses. I think that they're absolute what's the word? Um not politically homeless. What's this, um, a person who, uh, a leech, that's the word. Yes, someone who's like a leech. It's, y y or, I'm trying to think of the name. It's like someone who's like Gollum from The Lord of the Rings. I, I'm going to uh, present myself to be weak. I'm going to present to me, to make myself look, um, humbled, or uh, humbled in society. And if you disagree with me, how dare you go somebody who's innocent? And that's one of the reasons why I disagree with the LGBT group. Q plus political group. 
Being live action and marketed towards uh, the original fans, who are now in their uh, now all in their 20s and early 30s, it's likely that the new adaptation will be more mature than the an uh, than the animated pro uh, pr processor. <laughs> Every addition to the Avatar franchise goes deeper and deeper into mature topics, meaning it would only be logical for the newest installment to go further, farther than ever before. And that's the biggest issue there, is that the political group, the LGBTQ plus group, political group, that, is ha that has a specific political agenda that is associated specifically with your immutable characteristic and there's an ideology associated to that and uh, it's like if you want to have black lives matter representation are you saying that we should not care about your race or your sex or your gender or your skin color which again i need to stop using the word race because we're all one race it's either we're all one race or we're all different races. Every single person is a different race because the definition is just one different characteristic than another person that's significantly different. Because I'm significantly different than my mom and my father. Well, guess what? Am I a different race? <laughs> so, oh man. But because of that specifically, that ideology that is associated, if you want me to, if two, two people come into a group, two people come into a, um, a job interview, one of them gets the job. If it happens to be more white people, and you have a problem with that, do I have any right to say, will you follow with me and fight against any other black prominent places? If you think that there, well, there's too many white people, can we go in other places and start talking about how there's too much black people there? Bullshit, you won't. <laughs> it's like, I personally don't care. If you want to go down the road, would you, are you allow, will you allow the other side? Yes, allow it. Or will you fight hand in, hand in hand? Or is it just a political group? You disagree with me, therefore bigoted. So thank you, Rachel Roth, for being who you are and showcasing the political nature of the LGBTQ group and all of its jazz. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Please post that. Please, please post your comments, questions, and concerns right down below. Please smash that like and subscribe button. And for more important, more importantly, for the rest of the day, please enjoy it. Please go out there and create it and be excellent to each other. See you next time.